talk about. It actually ties in pretty well because this is actually a topic that I think people who are old school have a better insight on. Is the current one that everyone is forced to address, which is that we have to play Counter Strike online right now. In fact, if people don't know, at Flashpoint, you probably heard if you watched any of those Q and A's. We were trying to do the last Flashpoint of the year as a LAN to like end the year in a bang. We couldn't even do that because we just can't get the facilities set up in a way where all the players could come and be safe and all the rest. So as a result, basically, it's just going to only be the talent on land the, and the players will just play online like they have all these ESL events, Dream Acts, etc. So right, obviously, it's actually been a topic, by the way, I've noticed, Khan, which because in the past, the only online things were either qualifiers or like the leagues, which weren't considered as important as the big lands. And even then, like you had a land finals for the league anyway, so there was still an offline component. I used yeah. to be one of the people where... When I would do what, I, what we all do, which is we all have our certain pet peeves and you just bang on about that all the time. I always hated when a team, classic examples were like, you know, space soldiers and stuff, were just like twice as good in the online part and then they come to the LAN and they just don't do that well. And my problem obviously is like, maybe they knocked out a really good LAN team to get to that spot, the LAN, and then they go there and they're not as good, right? Everyone used to always have like a big pushback where if I said that online wasn't as good or it's a different type of game, they would just take it like personally, like, oh, so you you just hate that player or, well, why can't you just give him credit? Also, you know, still... component, right? Back in the days, I used to online or like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to name people necessarily, but yeah, that was definitely a thing. The connotation around online was like sure. eating, config, yeah, whatever, all those things. But so we, obviously, uh, we, we broke that for Finland because we sucked online after uh, after years and years of Finnish people being very good online. So obviously, the main issue now is everything has to be online anyway. And so the real issue is people want to know, like think of some of the results we've seen, like Heroic won a massive event, ESL won Cologne, Complexity won like the Blast event, Big obviously won a whole bunch of it. Like, these are teams where on paper, these would all be big shocks if they won those same la tournaments if they were on land. Like, that would be considered like one of the great upsets or like, wow, it's a new like number one team here. But people unfortunately don't really give them their credit because it's online. They, so they think if we went to land next month, maybe those teams would be good. Where do you come down on this card? Obviously your whole career was pretty much played offline, except for, because actually back then we didn't even have as many qualifiers. You tend to just be invited except for like IEM right so yeah like what is your take on it like how do you look at this era like can can you in your mind when fanatic players now are you able to put it to one side that like obviously it'd be nicer if it was landing so like, this is still real competition this is still the best tournament right now yeah i mean the amount of times you ask someone that question the amount of like different answers you're going to probably get um and mine might even change right so um, i've always been a advocate for offline play you have the same conditions you're having the same audience or back in our days kind of lack of audience but you kind of you know lived in the same kind of circumstances and environment and that should potentially deliver the most equal platform for competition right um looking at online play today i don't know all the kind of nitty-gritty details around the technicalities and ping time and if you have a certain maybe hardware sponsor that provides better performance or whatever but i think you can probably make an argument that it's fairer and more equal to play on LAN. Uh, Kind of like makes sense to the moment I even say this, right? And I'm sure the two of you agree. Um, I mean, we entered the slump quite soon into COVID. It's very naive to say like, yeah, because of COVID, we're not playing as well as before. But I do like to think at least that experienced players will play better um, in an offline environment. They are used to the travel, the lifestyle, the pressure. And I don't know if you should kind of like, yeah, try to define pressure because there's surely pressure online as well, right? But yeah, you're confronted with elements that, are, yeah, put you or tries to push you outside of your comfort zone. And that is not always the same case for online play, right? So let's for a minute also think about the heroics or the big uh, teams right now that are, you know, doing, doing really well in comparison to what they did before. And what I'm saying now is not to try to portray that they wouldn't do as good sure. offline necessarily. But maybe this is their moment to shine. Maybe the hunger those players have that they want to prove themselves that they are maybe more comfortable in that said comfort zone I talked about before, uh, that some of those teams are centralized and they're centralized at the place they can call home, right? Um, there are many kind of manage managemental errors I do think takes place now because as kind of a business owners and the lack of those arenas, the lack of the like the sponsor deliverables, the content creation you can generate from a physical event is you know, very, very different to the online world. So there's maybe more pressure now that you know, play a lot of the tournaments, you know, screw screams in favor of just like play, playing those things because we kind of need that content and make the best out of that, right? Uh, 
in hindsight, should Fnatic CSGO have played fewer events? Should we have played all the events we played from a central place in Sweden? We only played some of those so far. And I can't just simply say that we're going to play better from that place or not. But from a management and coaching standpoint, we can control that environment, right? And I think some teams have done that better than others. Um, and I don't know if we, we would rate on that list. Uh, do I miss on offline Counter-Strike? I, I really do. Um, but I do think, again, like today's online Counter-Strike is probably way more control than it ever was. But I also say this two weeks or less than that away from the biggest coaching scandal or cheating scandal we've sure. probably seen in, 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 in the history of esports to some degree, right? I mean, you have match fixing in Korean StarCraft and whatever, people got in jail, whatever. But that is quite insane here, right? Yeah. But it's it's also so, hard to kind of like follow up on that. I know you're going to come in a second, right? But yeah, you know what 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 have people actually done back home in their home environment or the centralized place when they compete? You never in, know. Yeah, yeah, you never know anymore. So I'm kind of like I'm kind of tripping in my own thought uh, for a train of thought here, right? It's very messy. I'm curious. Yeah, Tommy, maybe you can take it onwards. I'm going to try to package my thoughts a bit better. But high level offline pain plays more fair. I think for a relatively experienced team like we have in Fnatic, you have people that play that pretty much every major since the first one. Um, very comfortable with the, with the, with the offline environment. Uh, that would be better for us. And I think, again, like younger, unproven, up-and-coming players maybe have a bit of an easier time right now in the online play. Um, and I also think it kind of like becomes kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy for some of those older players as well, right? Like, yeah, those guys are only beating me on LAN. And, yes. uh, sorry, online. Yes. They can never beat me on LAN. Fuck this COVID thing. I'm just going to take a break and probably bench me, you know, my team owner. I don't care yes. anymore. Um, anyway, just some, I guess, high-level thoughts. Um, I, I agree on basically all of it. I think the one thing that I would add just as sort of like an additional qualifier is I think the longer that this goes on and we don't have offline tournaments, I think the more likely it is that the sort of the experienced players who are unlikely to be able to put forth 100% effort and, you know, take it as seriously as they might take offline play are probably actually going to get better, I think, because they're going to sort of realize like, hey, this is actually it now. This is the new normal. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm either going to be good or I'm not. Um, but I, I said before, like my teams are always sort of like famously bad for bad in online play. And I, I think I think it's honestly just because I think it's just hard to like differentiate scrims from matches sometimes when you're playing from your home. You know, like you're in your own environment, you're sitting on your own computer, you wake up the same way, everything just feels the same, except like this match matters and this doesn't. Like you play differently because it's a match and it's not a scrim. Obviously, like there's lots of differences like that. You might prepare differently. But I think mentally, like once you've played some number of years, like I think it's just hard to get yourself riled up the same way about every single game. And like, that's also like, look, is that, is that like a great excuse? No, like you should always find a way to be yes. equally focused, but like realistically, like people have a finite amount of attention and focus and you can't waste all of that in group games at tournaments. That's why there's more upsets in group stages. It's not even necessarily that matches are best of one. It's just that people don't think about them as much as they do about the semifinals or the finals. I just think it's really hard to get yourself to be equally focused and equally attentive and each equally motivated, frankly, uh, for, for all the games. And you kind of do have to pick your spots. You know, like if there's a bunch of these guys that have been playing all the biggest tournaments for five years, like Patrick said, traveling 200 days a year, like part of your part of your routine becomes that at home you kind of just kill time and you frankly find time to do other stuff than play games. You make sure that you continue improving and practicing, but outside of that, like you actually kind of have to remove yourself from the game. And the way you kind of get rid of all the distractions is frankly that you move and none of the distractions follow with you. So like your family stays behind, you know, your dog stays behind, like all the all your friends yeah. stay behind and you get, you go somewhere else, you sleep in a hotel, you wake up, you go to breakfast and it's a different mindset. And I think that's the stuff that's just really, really hard for people who have been playing at, the, at a high level for years and years to sort of emulate in a home environment. I do think people will get better over time. The more experienced players sort of, I, I think the, the motivation gap will shrink compared to like the up and comers as Patrick put it. But I, I just think that's, that's a real issue. And like, I don't think it's like, oh, well, like that's just an excuse. And like, I don't even think it's solvable. I don't think you can do anything about that i think you'll you can do better but i just think it's a reality like that's how people are 
I would even say, like, I actually think what you've made me think there of actually a couple of points I haven't heard anyone make on any of the shows. Because obviously this topic's been like very prevalent on all the talk shows, etc. And obviously people tend to go with the, the main ones that Khan pointed out initially, the obvious ones of like, there's more pressure if you're on a stage and if you've got fans there and if you've never played in that environment versus being in your bedroom where it's comfortable and, you know, maybe your PC, it might have cheats, it might not. It might just be really comfy for you. Like the joke back in the day, we always used to make, me and Lopez, whenever someone was amazing online and shit, online is like they must have the comfiest fucking computer chair ever with like the favorite <laughs> mug with the coffee in a way like really that's the back educator too <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but what's funny is they're the obvious ones, but I would say a side one is actually, it touches on two things you guys said there. So one, Lopez's angle, like that's one of those areas I, you know, it's a pet peeve of mine, mate, is when fans are like, when, when you make a comment, like, of course you can't try all the time. They're like, what do you mean? You're paid as a professional. You should. It's like, no, he means as in no one can give 100% mental energy in every task, every second of the day. Of course, when you're doing a task, you think to yourself, right, well, this is going to be a really difficult one. So I'll do this one early in the morning when I've had breakfast or something, or I'm going to do this one before I get tired at the end of the day. Everyone does that. What you do is manage your energy because you want to peak and have all your energy and be your best at the right moment, right? It's the same for pro players. Like when Khan was in a team where they've been in the final of like, 10 of the last 15 land tournaments he's not going to be going at 100 percent in the first best of one of the next tournament because he knows that like i might have to be at my best on day four of this event day three so i might have to pace myself a little bit like if this is in say i'm playing against some local team who are never going to make the playoffs maybe that's the game we're a little bit more relaxed in we're not as focused maybe we don't anti-strap them 100 percent. like you burn yourself out if you don't so that is that is a real factor i think probably i know it sounds whack because if you're a fan you're like yeah but dude it's been like six months we've been online it's like yeah but that's the problem we didn't know it was going to be six months did we we all thought it was going to be like a month or two months so if you were a really legendary player and fanatic was a great example because that fanatic team was making top four at every land before we went online they probably were, some of them, at least on some subconscious level, thinking, right, yeah, it's not going great online, but okay, if we get to land next month or, you know, we, we'll be back. We'll be we'll be the team we used to be. These guys that are beating us now, maybe you won't be as good. And then the other angle, which is kind of tied into that, is you don't even have to speculate. Dude, the team that is the ultimate example of why people who are really good land teams never give a fuck about online is the Polish Virtus Pro guys. They had years where they were like going top four of the major and then they'd go home and they couldn't even qualify for like ECS or some shit. Like well, they also they would didn't lose... qualify for many of those majors. They, Loads they of them. Through the back door. Right. No, no, I didn't mean the 1.6 ones. Though. Oh. I mean like the CS Go guys. Because in well, CS Go, I mean, they used to be the famous guys for the most part, frankly. But, that, but that's the problem. They really were the guys where I have talked to them and they would say that. They would be like well, why would I give a fuck about losing to this team online when online we would always smash them? And they were right, by the way. Like, if they did play that team, they would. But the problem is that becomes a self-fulfilling mentality. Like, it's almost like you're waiting in the online game till it gets to 14 to 14 and then that guy does some bullshit round and then you just score, right? Pull out the excuse card. Well, that would never happen online. He wouldn't go for that play. You, it, it's kind of like you gave yourself an excuse to lose before you even played the game, didn't you? It is also a prerequisite to win some of the earlier games to get to a later stage. So, like, that's like the balance, right? Like, yes. there was a time on, on my second year on EG where we'd been in Europe for like, you know, like six weeks or something in a row playing different tournaments. And we went back to the US and, like, we just stopped practicing for like three weeks. It was actually before the MSI Beauty tournament. We didn't practice as a team. We just, like, made sure everybody played like five hours of pugs because we'd already been together with that roster for forever and boot camped in Europe forever. So we didn't practice for like two weeks. We played a couple of scrims before going there, but we just practiced individually because like team-wise we were there and we knew that it was it was going to be impossible to sort of be really focused and then still stay like 100% focused at the event. 